some of the tests have some setup to do before I can really run the test. And the setup might be common to all the methods which are there in the particular class. What would be the right place to do such kind of things? That's where the at before and at after methods come in. So let's look at a quick example of a unit test with that. So let's create a new unit test for it. So let's not do it in here. Let's quickly create a new unit test for that. So I'll go to source test Java and I would want to go to the package where we had the spring helper test and I'll create a new class. So right click new J unit test case. That's how we created this unit test. And I would want to write a quick test. So quick test. I would probably call quick before after test or something of that kind. We want to learn how the before and after works. So I just leave the rest of the stuff as detail, I mean as default, and let's click finish. And there you see the first, I mean, this is the auto generated code by Eclipse. And when I run this test, it would fail because there's a fail method calling not implemented yet in here. So that's good. So let's actually. What we'll do is in the test itself, I'll call this uh, test one. Let's keep it very simple. And I would actually do a sysout. Actually, uh, it's not really recommended to do a lot of sysouts in your code. Ideally, you should be using a logger. Like in, uh, like I don't really want to set up the logging framework. So I'm going to use system out, but ideally should be logger. So system out, I'll say test one executed and Let's do a little bit more of setup before we try and add the before and after method. So I'll call this test2 and test2 execute. I want to understand how the before annotation works. So I want to run this method public void before. Like let's call it setup. Instead of calling the before, I'll call it setup. Let's say this is either setting up uh, some uh, test data before executing the test. So let's say this is the executing the setup for uh, each test. So uh, let's call this system out. I'll call this before. How do you add, say something needs to be executed before every test? How do you do that? Try and guess. Yeah, add before is the annotation. So I'll add an add before annotation. So it's in or.junit. Uh, if you type in add before and press control space, Eclipse would bring this drop down down and you can press enter and then that particular import is added in to the list of imports. So if there's an import or J unit before and now let's see what happens. I'm going to just run this test. Okay, so let's see what the output is. Right click run as J unit test. Both the tests would succeed. I mean, there's no question about it because there's no nothing being tested. Just a sysout, but you can see that whatever is in add before is executed before every test. So that's the crucial thing that we wanted to learn. So if we had some setup to do before a test, I can do that setup in the add before. So add before before test would do that. So one of the ways, if let's say I wanted to create a new string helper, right? It's not okay for me to create have one. Uh, instance of string helper in here if it was that kind of scenario where my class I would want to create a new instance of the class every time the test runs the way I could have done it is I could create a string helper in here and I can create a add before method so I can use add before I mean as usual I have to do an import so I'll use eclipse to get that import add before public void I mean, the name before here does not signify anything. You could have called it setup or dummy or yeah, whatever, but give it a real good name. Don't, I mean, even though it's not important, it might be useful to have a good name there. So let's go ahead and uh, write the new in here. So what would happen now is before every test, the new string helper is created and each of these tests would be running with a new instance of string helper. In this particular test, it's an overkill because I mean, we are not having any values stored in the string helper. It's just some kind of an utility helper class. But if let's say there was some data stored in that particular class and you want to renew the setup each time, then you have the add before. And I would have you guess 
what at after would do think about it yeah your guess is very true so it's public void usually we call it tear down let's say i created a lot of data setup for my test and i would want to tear down tear it down after every test so let's say i got a connection to the database or connection to something which i want to give it back i mean i don't want to leave the connection open right so how do i do that i'll do that using the at after annotation again i can do control space and get the import in and as you know the way we do it this out and the way we, i got the system dot out dot printer then was this out and control space and you would have system dot out dot printer and i would really recommend you to become an expert at ide because if you understand how the ide works that's half the job work half the job done because as a developer we are on the ide all the time so learn everything that you can do you can about eclipse i guess or IntelliJ if that's the ide you are using okay let's go go ahead with whatever we are doing in here system dot out dot print and then what do you want to print i want to print after test let's run this test and see what after does aha before test test executed after test before test test executed after test if i had two more tests then before test and after test would have been executed twice if i have to explain them in a nutshell before and after these methods are run before every test method and after every test method so the before runs every before every test method and after runs after every test method so if i have five tests then before runs five times after runs five times that's the before and after test scenario Thanks for joining more than a million students who are learning from us. At in 28 minutes, we defined a learning roadmap for Java and front-end developers. We created more than 25 courses covering all the topics that you are seeing on the screen. There are four things you can do to make best use of these courses. Number 1 is Udemy. You will find a link in the description of the video to our Udemy profile. We are teaching a lot of courses on Udemy and most of them are free. Number 2, visit our website www.in28minutes.com. You'd find tons of information including how you can register for our trainings and the link to Udemy and our GitHub code as well. Number 3, visit our GitHub repository with more than 20 repositories covering varied examples. It's a comprehensive source of information and code. Last but not the least, you'll find a set of discount codes for all our Udemy courses in the description as well. Feel free to use them. Good luck from the team here at In 28 Minutes, your destination for high-quality step-by-step -step courses.